progress tonight. We pray that your word will bring healing to our soul. It will bring transformation to our life. It will move us from glory to glory. And at the end, your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. So this evening, I am going to be exhorting us on the topic, diligence in kingdom service. Diligence. So when I checked up the meaning of diligence, I know it's a word we normally always use. I realized that, I mean, diligence, I almost say that diligence is everything in kingdom service. Since I've been looking at this topic for some days now, I've, I've found myself questioning myself a lot. That I've, I've had to be praying, Lord, please increase my grace so that I can be diligent. Because it seems like diligence is all everything that you and I must have in this in the service in the service of God in this kingdom. So diligence simply means I just use the word a compound word to say seriousness. Like you being serious with the things of God in this service, you being careful to do it well, the way that is expected of you. You being thorough, like doing it thoroughly, leaving no aspect undone. You being busy in it, just being busy doing the work of the Lord. You being very detailed, persistent, persevering, you know, being attentive, being timely too, being committed to it, being dedicated. If I have other words to use, just being everything, as in just carrying the work of, let me just use the word, carry on for your head. Carrying the work of God on your head. That's diligence. And we, we, we have a, a test today that is taken from Proverbs 22, 29, where King Solomon, the writer of Proverbs, says there, do you see a man that is skilled in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Another version says, do you see a man that is diligent in his work? He will, he will stand before Kings, he will not stand before mean men. Ordinarily, if we use the word to say, if we say, if someone like me now says, oh, among these people that are here, some of them are, are mean, others are the others are good, others are others are kings. You and I are going to take that word to be like, why are you commonizing some people? Are you trying to say some are not good enough? Everyone is important. We always say that. But here we can see the Bible making a distinction between men, some are obscure, some, or in other words, men, in other words, unimportant. Some people are like kings, very important, well-placed, all right? So he's saying, for you, your qualification to be able to stand before kings, before important people, right, is diligence. And we have already defined what diligence means, so many things. I mean, carrying it for your head, doing it as if that's all that is there to do. Second to none. That's just how I can describe what diligence is. So that's what the proverb tells us that it, it says, show me somebody who is diligent, and I will show you that that person will not stand before main men. In other words, that person will not be found on the floor. It will be on top there. Let me just explain it like that. Okay. So there's one man that I came across in the course of reading. He, uh, you know, he wrote his biography. His name is Benjamin Franklin, all right? So while he was growing up, this guy was always listening to his father, quoting this particular verse that you and I are using tonight. And so this man grew up with the feeling that everything he ever needs in his life that would take him to the position he wants to get to, maybe like fame or be important in, in, in life, is diligence. And so he took this proverb like, a, like you know, as in he meditated on it always. Whenever he needed to do anything, he would remember the scripture and quote it to himself. And then he, he never knew that he was actually going to stand before kings. But at the time he was writing his biography, he has had the opportunity of standing before five kings. And in fact, the last, the last one, he had an opportunity of even sitting with, the, with one of them to eat on a dinner. He never knew that it was, you know, it came true for him, okay? But there's, I'm not trying to say that you should be thinking of meeting the king. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm just trying to portray here today is that for him to have got to that position where he was actually able to meet with kings, he has put in effort into his life. He has worked it out. 
All right, so you and I also need to, and then I, I want to bring out a point from that mass story, all right? You know, if you are standing before a king, you are not going there to just go and see the king's face and see how handsome he looks. You, it is because you're there for a job. You are there for not just a job, an important job. Because the job that a king will call you to the palace for will not be an ordinary one. And the qualification that can take you there is diligence, is seriousness, is to put in effort into what you are doing. It doesn't matter what you are doing. There's no job that is too bad. I mean, that is, that is worse. There's no, there's no um, role. You are, for example, you are given in drama that is the least. There's no least role. All right, because all the roles we have to work together to make a drama script. Okay, so every aspect that you find yourself serving, you need to understand that you are expected to be diligent there. You are expected to take it seriously. You are expected to carry it for your head. Permit me to be using that word this evening because that's how I want to explain diligence. Carry them for your head. Okay, so keep on doing that. And this was what this guy was doing, being serious. And so there are some few points I want to bring out today to let us understand that diligence is almost all that it takes, all right? We, 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 you see, the first one I want to talk about, let me talk about seriousness. I said seriousness, which is diligence, is the key. Why? I said because in whatever calling that you pursue in life, whether you're going to be a scriptwriter, a drama artist, a singer, a preacher, an evangelist, an usher in the church, a counselor, whatever you want to be, that you, you are supposed to be good at it. There is only one way that you can be good at whatever you do. And that is by acquiring knowledge in that area. By, by opening yourself up to knowledge, to acquire the skill that you need. Because you need to be skilled in order for you to be able to stand before kings. All right, so you need to possess detailed knowledge of that thing that you are doing, right? So there may be different, people say there's differences between head knowledge and practical skills. But I, I want to say, tell us that in this world, everything we do, you must have to combine the knowledge, whether theoretical knowledge, with practical skills, all right? So in other ways, you need to also be a specialized, be, you know, uh, let me give an example. Say, for example, you are a, a, for you to be a medical doctor, you must have to, first of all, acquire the theoretical skills in school. And then you cannot go for practical sessions before you can be allowed to administer treatment to a human being. So both, not, both physical knowledge, uh, theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge is expected. All right? So as a Christian in this kingdom, for you to be able to stand up and represent God in the place where he has called you, if it is for you to be a drama artist, I want to believe you are interested in drama. That's why you are in this training today. That's why you have created time this weekend to be here. So for you to be able to speak out the heart of God, I mean, act out the heart of God on the stage or on set, on camera set, or even in any other area you find yourself, you must be skilled. You need to know how to interpret your scripts. You even need to know what a script should look like. When, you, when a script is handed over to you, you're, you are casted. You, are, you also need to know what, what is in this script. What message is here for me to, 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 to send across? What's my role? How am I supposed to work hand in hand with every other person? How am I supposed to carry myself? How should I bring, how should I interpret my role? All of these things you will need to know. If you don't know and you just jump up and start to act, you will be on your own. At the end of the day, you might end up acting, you leave the stage, and nobody is blessed. And the message of the Lord that was given to you to deliver has not yet been delivered. So it's important that you acquire knowledge, 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 knowledge. So being serious is the key. Is the key, okay? So we need Christians who are learning in order to serve well not just to serve. So we need you as a Christian, not just to have, not just to have the heart of a servant, because we find people who are very eager to serve. They want to serve, but they do not have the head of a servant. You first of all need the head and then the heart will follow. They work together. Head knowledge and then the heart to serve helps you put it into practice. 
all right? This is very important, okay? So um, I know that is the reason why you're here this weekend. So I want to tell you to this evening, now that you're here, don't waste your time here this weekend. We have a set, we have sessions that are packed. Be very serious this weekend so that you can benefit from this great privilege of learning, of learning the act of script writing. So that you too, when you are finished, you can come out and say so, do something in the drama ministry where you have been called to. And you will minister healing. In the dead we rise when, when, you, when you dramatize. The deaf, the deaf ear will open because you, you are on the stage. All right? So I want to give thanks to God for Dominion Faith Ministry for making it possible for us to have this kind of platform to learn this weekend. The second thing I want you to take away today is that the king is powerful, but they need help. Ask yourself, why should I need to stand before king? Because the kings need help. They're powerful, but they need help. Take example, King David in the Bible and Solomon, as powerful as they were. They needed help in order that they may do their duties. If you read the book of First Chronicles chapter 12, it, it is detailed there how people came from different um, tribes and, you know, to come and help David while he was preparing for war against Saul. How, how he needed help. And do you know what is that's peculiar in that chapter? The people that were raised for David to help David in that war were all skilled men. Why was God so particular about using skilled men to help David? Why didn't he just dip hand into people and just say, hey, you, you go ahead. He looked for skilled people. Even those who needed to carry shields, you know, shields to, to protect the king. They had to be skilled in that area. If you needed to do whatever you needed to do, you must be skilled there. If you're robot to play, you are a skilled singer. They, they won't just speak somebody. If God needed skilled men to help the king, then why do you think my case is different from theirs or your case will be different? God who has blessed you and sent you to go and minister in drama. He expects you and is waiting on you to be skilled. He is expecting on you to acquire knowledge. And that's why you are here this, this weekend. This is just to help us to understand our reason for being here this weekend. So don't let us take it lightly. Let us take every single session as if our life depends on it. Because really, our life depends on it. It depends on the life you are living. If it is the life of God, then it depends on knowing more, more and more and more in order that you may stand before him in the right way. Not like you'll be given an assignment and you can't interpret it well. You are supposed to be speaking to an adulterer and telling an adulterer in the drama that it is wrong, whereas because you did not get skilled, you are now acting into an adulterer as if it's normal. So you have got to be you are sure of what you are doing, okay? Apart from uh, these people that were given to uh, David, these skilled people, the Bible in that chapter also talked about the source of Issachar, which is, they are the people who understood the times because they were skilled in understanding of the times. That gift did not come to them while they were sleeping. A man of understanding is a man that does research who reads and creates time to train himself. So the sons of Issachar were specialized in this area. And that made them to become very well respected, even before the kings, because before they take decision regarding Israel, the sons of Issachar must be conduct, consulted, because they understood the times, and they can tell what is the next thing that should be done in Israel. What time are we moving in now into in Israel? What should we do in now? They will be consulted because why? They understood the signs. They understood the times of the seasons and time. They knew it. That is what skill can make you become a well respected person, somebody who is needed. Somebody who is needed. All right? So God is able, but He needs us to carry out His assignment. He will not do it, jump down from the sky to do it. How would you thought once, why did he have to come in form of a man so that we can be saved? Couldn't he speak a word from heaven and we are all saved? But he came as a man because he needs a man. 
is always in need of a man. He needed a man then. He still needs a man now. Even when Jesus had not died, when the world was in the way it was, God found a way to relate with men, true men. In other words, he even picked up on some people who were not deserving of him. People like Moses who had committed murder and ran away. He picked him up and said, hey, Moses, I am here. I've heard the cry of my people. And I have come down to help them. So why is Moses important in that agenda? You have come down to help them, then go and help them. Why is it Moses that should go? Why didn't God go himself? He, he needs you and I just in the same way today. So we must prepare to do his work well. We need to be diligent. Okay? He need, we need to be diligent. And you know, we... These sons of Issachar were making policies for Israel. So that is where God wants you and I to represent today. Even don't say, oh, is it not just drama? No, we need people who can add drama in the state house. We need somebody who, who can go to number 10. The, um, I'm going to add drama there. White House, go and add drama there. And let your drama bring the president to Christ. And let your drama bring the workers in that place to Christ. We need people who will be in high places, and the, the children of God, to be in places of authority, to act a drama and make somebody say, as from now on, because of this drama that I watched, oh, my day, I am giving my life to Christ. We need you to be there. You can't get there if you are not skilled. They won't just speak you, just call somebody and say, hey, you need to be skilled. I'm just hammering this tonight because I want you to take this training like never before. Like something that you know that except I can do this thing well, I will not be able to go far. Even in the local group, if we, if we give you a script and you can't interpret it well, we, we can take it from you and give it to another person who is doing it properly. So being diligent is key. All right? So I am hoping, by the grace of God, that you and I will become policy works. We're going to be those people that are needed in places. Yeah? We, are, we, we, we need to, I mean, don't, don't joke with it. Don't joke with it. Do whatever you are doing well. In the public arena, in the marketplace, we need Christians in journalism, in the media, in law, in government affairs, in science and medicine. In the fine art, why shouldn't Christians be making major contributions in all of these fields? We carry the gospel with us everywhere we go. We carry the gospel, all right? So basically, in your world, we open doors for you and for the faith that you represent also. If Christians were never permitted in such a place because of your skill you have demonstrated, they will open doors to Christianity. So it don't say, oh, it's just drama. You may not even just literally go and stand in front of the Queen Elizabeth or of the kings, but you might work for even all these big, big places, like you said. So why not aim for, why don't you aim for something like that? Why can't you up, upgrade yourself, update yourself, learn more, aim as high as you can. Ultimately, aim to be a son or daughter of Isaka, who understands the time that will be looked for, will be looked for everywhere. Seek to one day be a, a you know a wise giver of advice based on your, your skills, based on the deep knowledge of what has been done before that other people have done. That is what you and I keep on learning in training. I just want to say that in conclusion, 2 Timothy chapter 2 15, Paul was saying to his son there, he said, he says to so him, study to show yourself approved. A workman that need not be ashamed of correctly dividing the word of truth. So study takes diligence. Okay? Determination, time, effort, money, and commitment. All of those things, seriousness. Is so, everything is what you must put in. So it is also a long-time process, not something that is done overnight. However, why don't you begin this weekend and say to yourself, I want to acquire as much skill as I can from this wonderful event that I found myself here today. Not everyone is privileged to be here. Okay? And may God bless you, each and every one of you, as you prepare to increase your skill in your calling this evening. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Tuma. 
Let's jam our hands together for that wonderful session of God's word. Let's jam our hands together. Let's jam our hands together. God bless you, our mommy. God bless you. Let's, Amen. in a moment of a minute, let's just say a word of prayer to her, that the Lord continue to water us. She has watered us. She has given us his word, that the Lord will continue to increase her. Say that the word of the Lord may grow in you richly, richly. That is your portion, ma'am. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, mommy. Yes, one of the key words we are taking home tonight is the fact that you need to apply both theoretical skill and practical skill. You don't acquire one, but you need to apply the other one. Thank you very much, mommy. Even kings do need help. Kings do need help. Those are the highlights for mommy's exhortation. Yes, very well, we are moving forward to what we are here for. Yes, the training itself. We are here to meet with one of God's seasoned teacher in this end time whom God has given his word. God has given the ministry of reconciliation. We're talking about our father and the Lord, my mentor, my father, God's guide over my life, our covenant leader, the president of Dominion Faith Ministry Worldwide. He will be coming to take us in a moment of exclusive and intensive training on skill writing and storytelling. Let's jam hands together as we welcome God's servant, evangelist, God bless you, sir. You are welcome, sir. Thank you so much, uh, bro. Family, let's clap for Jesus. Let's appreciate Jesus. Let's thank the Lord for this opportunity. I just want us to appreciate God wherever we are at the moment. Um, the Lord has been so good for you to have found yourself here. It means God has special assignment for you. So, one thing the first thing we're going to quickly do is to try as much as possible to concentrate tonight. This is not a kind of training that uh, we hone our video and we get doing something else. It's a kind of training that um, is going to make the difference in our lives as we continue to journey in the kingdom because we are creative ministers. So number one thing I want us to do, if you are not at work, if you are not um, in a place where it's not conducive, you need to put your video on. Because it's a training, it's a classwork, it's not a church service. So we need to see one another so we can communicate. It's going to be an interactive class. So it's not going to be uh, a teaching alone where somebody is just talking. So we are going to have an interaction. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Brother Joseph, in the phone. So I want us to put our video on. Very, very important. I need to see our faces except you are at work. If you are at work, it's understandable. Uh, if you pay thousands of pounds or hundreds of pounds to study or to go for a training, you want to put your, your, your video on, definitely. I've just concluded a series of training uh, that I paid for. Uh, I wasn't told before I put my video on because I know it was it's worth it. So the same thing with this one. So it's important you put your video on so that we can see your face. And then the Lord bless you as you do that. The Bible says Jesus Christ as his son, he learned obedience through what he suffered for. So one of the things that makes us um, stand out in this kingdom is the ability to um, apply and uh, uh, adhere ourselves to instruction and also apply those uh, in, in, instructional information to better our lives. Um, God bless us in the name of Jesus. So quickly, we're going to look into um, the act of uh, script writing today. We are going to be talking and discussing about script writing. And then before we do that, I want to appreciate Evangelist Mercy below for that wonderful um, exhortation. It was powerful. More grace to you, man, and more strength to you in the name of Jesus. Brother Femi, the Lord bless you for that wonderful um, hosting. God bless you. Brother Milani, God bless you. God bless everyone in the house. I really appreciate us for that uh, wonderful section. We're going to have a, a good time in training tonight uh, by the grace of God. So number one thing I want us to look at is this. We're talking about script writing. What is actually script writing? I want you to type in the chat, what do you understand by script writing? Have you ever written any script before? Um, what is your understanding about script writing? So I want to see us typing in the chat um, tonight. Um, some of the people I'm seeing on the platform have actually sat in my class at one time or the other. So I know it's not their first time of hearing about script writing. So 
I'm be I'm waiting for us. I'm waiting for us. Like I say, it's going to be an interactive class. Uh, it's not going to be a session where somebody is just talking and the rest are just watching. So, so what is script writing? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. So we are now in class. So we are no we are no longer in church. So this is a class. So let's now do class work. All right. Script writing is putting down the story you have into how the characters are to play their roles. Thank you so much, Brother Femi. Putting the characters in how they should play their roles. Any other, any other, any other definition or understanding of script writing? Script writing. Any other in the house? I want us to talk. I want us to talk. This is not um, it's not a preaching. So let's talk. What is script writing? So that I can understand the audience I'm talking to, and then from there we take it up. So what is script writing? We need to talk. So what Similene said is the act of writing scripts, usually for film or television. All right. The act of writing script, usually for film or television. That's powerful. That's good. Okay. The Nigerian people are actually, they are, they are educated people. I can see because these people are for all of them are from Nigeria. Comfort, SN. Script writing is the process of writing stories. In the script play medium, I love that. I love that. It's like that. It's like comfort um, peeped into my into my notes. Into my note is the process of writing stories in the script screenplay medium. All right, that sounds very good. Now, so we have an understanding of what script writing is. Okay, Prophetess Fumi Ogasimini said script writing is writing a story whereby we write the dialogue for individual characters can follow interesting interesting that's good philip bro philip says it is an art of writing a story alongside alongside assigning roles to different crew members that's interesting good so jesse said writing story for acting god bless you let's clap for ourselves we have all said well that's powerful so if you are looking for the definition of script writing just put all this thing together refine it and you get what script writing is all about i'm going to share my screen now then we'll be able to move fast hallelujah we're going to have a good time tonight by the grace of god we're going to learn new things and um, our life will never remain the same all right okay so if you can see my screen i want you to just give me a thumb up so i'll be sure you can see my screen just a thumb up ah great great you can see my screen hallelujah now so we want to look at the biblical approach to script writing biblical approach to script writing now as we continue in this training in this teaching um please if you have question please and please write it down or you type it in the chat very very important and the technical media 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 team please help us can be checking the chat uh, area to help us note the um questions that will be asked and i want i would like us to ask questions anyway all right so we're looking at biblical approach to script writing uh when we look at the word of god the bible says when god was talking he, god is always in the business of um speaking to his people and most times because of the nature of um, uh, the way man is being uh, wired, so many times we are unable to retain information at the highest level. Then there is need for us to be um, to write things down. So, and God said, when God was talk talking to Moses, He said that um, uh, I'm going to give you ten commandments. I'm going to write it down for you so that you can show these people. Uh, by the way, I want us to know that this training. I'm going to start from the biblical aspect or the biblical um, take on script writing and I'm going to take us to the technical and professionalism of script writing. So don't think it's going to be all Bible or all that. So you're going to have the biblical aspect and you're going to have the technical aspect in this training. So at the end of the day, you're going to be very, very, become a very well-rounded person when it comes to script writing. I can, I can bet you that if you pay attention and you make notes if you pay attention and you make notes your next script is going to be great definitely no doubt so the, the god was talking to the israelites he said then 
he was talking to the uh, um, prophet Abacock. He said, the vision is for an appointed time. In Abacock 2.2. 2. He says, write it down that those who see it may run with it. He said, the Lord said to me, write my answers plainly on tablet so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. That is the work of a script writer. The script writer is the one that the Holy Spirit reveals something to gives an answer to people's questions too and holy spirit wants that script writer to write it down so that others may run with it who are the others those who are going to act it are those who are going to watch it so i want you to begin to see yourself in the shoe of prophet abacock that god is speaking to at this end time that i have an answer to people's problems but I want you to write it down so that anyone that sees it may run with it. Hallelujah. So that's very, very important. The same way God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. So every screen, uh, script writer or screenwriter must cultivate the habit of writing stuff down. You see, we are living in the age and time where, where people believe that pen and paper no longer uh, it's no longer valuable. But I tell you, to any man and woman that will, be, that will be great in their calling, pen and paper are still very, 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 very important. No matter the amount of screen you have, if you see good writers, they will never go along with screen. They go with pen and paper. So, you must be able to write stuff down uh, as the Holy Spirit will download into your heart. Praise the Lord. Now, Let's look at script writing definition, like we have, def we have defined it in the uh, at the beginning of uh, this uh, teaching. Now, the way I put it is this: script writing is the process of writing story in a screenplay medium. The process of writing screenplay in a it's writing story in a screenplay medium. What does that mean? The process of writing for the purpose of production. For the purpose of mass production, whether for TV, whether for commercial, and whether for future. So that is screenwriting or script writing. Now, I said this is the process of writing down the action. I want you to note when you are writing this for screen, you must note all this. You must be able to write the actions down. You must be able to write the movement down, the expression, the gesticulation, and the dialogue. Of every character in the screenplay format. Now, when you look at the picture here, you will see that I put something there and I put what they means there. Now, this is what we call screenplay format. Every standard script must come in this format. If you are writing the script or you are writing for screen, which is called screenplay or screenwriting. Don't be, don't be, don't be, or other point out. Don't, don't, don't mix it up, yeah. Or don't be confused when I say script writing or screenwriting or screenplay. I'm, I, I'm still saying the same thing. Um, in my former teaching with those who are doing elementary script writing, I've been able to de define that. So, but it, with the, for the purpose of this training, whether I'm saying script writing or screenwriting, just take it as script writing. There is no much more difference in all that anyway. So now this is how a screenplay format should look like. So you have your scene heading. Your scene heading is also called the slog line. Slog line. That is the scene heading. So if I say, uh, in fact, as soon as you give me your script, I want to check your slog line anyway. I want to check your slog line. So your slog line contains the place the uh, shooting is going to take place the time then where exactly is it internal external so it actually is it actually differentiates scenes that is that, that's why it's called scene editing it differentiates scenes you know you want to show you are shooting different scenes so we should be able to know where exactly are we shooting so now i want you to type in the chat what slog line is can somebody give me the definition of slog line? Slog line. 
slug line. Who's going to go for us? Praise the Lord. Who's going for us? Slug line. All right. Nobody is typing. Okay, somebody has typed. Okay, slug line. Let's see. All right, slug line. Okay. Can somebody help me read? My system is not acting up, so I don't know what's wrong with it, but that's fine. So, so that's so slug line is the same thing as our sin heading. Very, very important. So, now. All right. Now, having said that, oh, let's close. Yeah, good. Now, so we know what slug line is about. It is very important you have it. Number two, your action. Your action. You don't forget we said that the screenplay or script writing is the process of writing, you no, know, the expression, the movement, the uh, gesticulation, the action and dialogue of a character in the screenplay format. So you must be able to write the action. What is the person doing? What exactly is the person doing? I'll give you an example. Let me see. Um, let me give you an example. Just one second. I want to give you an example of an action. I want to. I want you to be able to enjoy what you are doing and uh, what you are going to be writing afterwards. I'm going to show you a script now, and I'm going to give you an example of an action. Now, just one second. Okay. All right. Look at this. This is a script that we wrote for one of our major movies last year, and it's called Jayola. Now, you can see my slug line. I call. I say prologue, internal, church all day. So I know this is a prologue. It's also, it's also shot in the inside. It's not external. And we're in a church hall. What time of the day? Day, not night. Then action. Bishop Rex, Pastor Shola, Pastor Kingsley, and Jayola are in a boardroom chaired by Bishop Rex. And I put parentheses. We're going to get to that. So you can see the action now. You see the action? Now, you can see that under Bishop Rex, we have Bishop Rex as character. You see that name? You see where he's standing? Character, Bishop Rex. And you see the dialogue under the character, which is, you are welcome to the first executive meeting in the year. Let us pray. Are you getting it now? That is how a script should look like. Praise God. All right, let's go back to where we're coming from. Very, very important. We know how to write a, a screenplay. Very, very important. Some of the scripts, when people pick it, they just chuck it in the bin because they are not well formatted. So you can see the character name. You can see the dialogue. That is how a script should be. So you have your scene heading, you have your action, you have your character, and you have your dialogue. That is what is called screenplay format. Do we get it now? So i like somebody to put all this together for us and now tell us what a screenplay format is in the chat. What is a screenplay format? Based on the definition and the explanation I've given, scene heading, you have your action, you have your character name, and you have your dialogue. Putting all these things together is called screenplay format. So let somebody give us what that means. Amen. So we move on. Now, because we now know the format we should take, I would like us to quickly do something before I move on. I will give us some... Um, i like to give us some... Um, a kind of link. I'm going to send a link in, in here now. I want you to, when we finish this training today, I would like you to download that link and start writing your own script because you are going to write script for me um, in this training and I'm going to mark it and we are going to use the best script. We are going to shoot the best two scripts by the grace of God. We are going to shoot it. The best two scripts. So I've, say, I've sent um, a link in the chat for you to download Celtic. Now, having said that, Celtic is not the only screenwriting software. If, if you have been using other types, that's fine. 
and if you want to make research and use all that, so many of them, loads of them. But I just love Celtic because it's very, very easy to use. So that's that. So please take time to get uh, that downloaded. So let's look at pre-writing process. Before you can start writing script, or you can start thinking about writing a message, at least you must have a message. It means that it says that is there is, there is something you have to address. So, there is need for you to seek the face of God. And there is a process to go. Number one, the secret things belong to the Lord, our God. But the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever. That we may follow all the word of his law. Now, don't forget, if you are being moved at all at any point in time to write any message in this kingdom, it's because God wants to reveal something to you. Hence, there is need for you to be able to put yourself in a position to write. Hallelujah. Now, number one thing you need to do, separation. Separation. I've never seen any great script writer, Christian script writer or secular script writer that does not separate him or herself. God does not speak to people in a noisy environment. In fact, classified important messages are given in the solitary places. So, it is very important we understand the importance of separation in writing script. And this is what we call part of pre-writing. What we would prepare ourselves before we now start. So, there is nothing in under the sun except the one revealed to us through the revelation by God. If you are going to write that revelational message, if you are going to write something that we get people to change their ways of life. If you are going to write a message that will be evergreen, there is need for you to, se to be separated. So there is need to seek the face of God for fresh revelation before you commence writing. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. The Bible says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. It's an example. That even Jesus Christ. All right, there's a noise somewhere coming. Noise is coming from somewhere, please. Thank you. Can, can you just help us stop it? All right. So Jesus, as his God, learned that to actually receive the best from God, I must go to solitary place. So to receive that classified instruction information revelation you must be ready to go to solitary place you can't really get the best in a noisy environment i was um, listening to evangelist mike bamiloye that my bamiloye some times ago and he said when he wanted to write it was he at Baranla, he said he took time off he took time off to seek the face of god and get the best amen so for your next writing for your next script you will learn or you will try to separate yourself let's move to the next one hallelujah all right number two once you separate yourself there's need for us to be patient let's need for us to be patient i always tell my people i said a missionary is not a mission in a nori it's turn by turn a missionary is not a mission in a hurry, turn by turn. God will test your patience. Holy Spirit will test your patience. So patience is the ability to wait on Holy Spirit to download what is in the heart of God to your spirit. You will need to wait on God for that revelation. Otherwise, you will not be able to bat revelational messages. You know, there is difference between just normal messages, no, like Ukraine and Russia are fighting now. You can write a script on that. It's not bad. It's not bad. But for you to actually write revelational messages, you will have to wait. After you have separated yourself, you will have to wait there before God. The Bible says in Exodus 34, 28, Moses remained there on the mountain with the lord 40 days and 40 nights in all that time he ate no bread and drank no water and the lord wrote the terms of the covenant the ten commandment on the stone i want to ask you and as i always ask how long does do you think it takes 
for somebody to write on a tablet. Do you think it God is that slow that it takes him like probably four days to write one commandment for for Moses because it's a stone, it's hard. So God took his time and he now wrote first commandment, thou shalt not steal. He wrote it in four days. Then the second one, another four days. No, God was teaching Moses patience. So if you are going to come out or come up with that revelational message in your script writing, you will need patience. You will need to wait on the Lord. You will need to stay there. Amen. I always tell people, and I want somebody to give me an, uh, an answer on this, on this platform. You remember, Moses was not born when Abraham, when God, when God called Abraham. You remember, Moses was not born when God destroyed the earth with flood. You remember, Moses was not born when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. You remember, I'm talking about thousands of years, probably before Moses was born. Now, Moses wrote Genesis. The question is, how did Moses write Genesis? How did Moses write about Adam and Eve? How did Moses write about, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth? How did Moses write about uh, Father Abraham? How did Moses write about Jacob, Isaac, and Esau? How did Moses write about the days of Noah? How did Moses write about the Nephilims? How did Moses write about this? How did Moses write about it? I want us to think about it as we are going. I want us to think about it. And at the end of the day, I will tell us. But I want somebody, if you know it, I want, if you have an idea, let's just put it there so that we can learn from it. Amen. So God wants you to be patient. For you to receive a, a transgenerational message, you will have to be patient. Patient. The next one, you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So once you are patient, you now need to pick those messages at high frequency from the Holy Spirit. David said, once you have spoken, twice I've heard that all power belongs to God. So once God speaks once, God doesn't waste words. He doesn't waste, waste words. So you have to be patient there, but be ready to receive. Be sensitive. You see? Script writing is not for everybody. It's a, it's a very special craft. It's a special area. Because every great movie starts from great scripts. Every movie that we deliver lives starts from scripts that we deliver lives. So if the script is bad, the movie will be bad. That is why God invests in script writers. He invests in them high IQ, high knowledge, high wisdom, high revelation, high understanding. The moment you decide you want to be a script writer, you are a friend of God. It means that you are now a channel where God can actually answer people. You are a channel where God can give answers, revelation to the questions of humanity. So you are a special person. You are a special breed. You are just different. That is why we can't be many. Script writers can be many. Amen. So, because you are patient now, you have separated yourself now, the next thing is to be sensitive. You should be able to pick those signals at high frequencies. So, once I remember the, the, the story of Jayola, I was at work in the night and then I had my break and I went to have a nap. And Holy Spirit came. And downloaded the storyline to me. And as soon as I finish, as, as soon as I wake up, I woke up, I put those things down in form of script treatment, which we are going to teach uh, as, as time goes on tonight or, or tomorrow. Script treatment. How do you do your script treatment before you start writing? What do you need to put together so that you don't miss the track of all the information that God has given unto you or you have received? Amen. So we need to be sensitive. So we must sharpen our spiritual antenna to be able to pick spiritual signals at high frequencies. 
There is noise everywhere. There are distractions everywhere. That is why you have to be separated. You have to remain there. And you have to be sensitive to be able to pick those signals. You have to be able to pick it. This is achievable through fasting and prayer. We must not approach spiritual exercise with physical knowledge or power. You've gone to study theater art in university and you want to write Christian, Christian uh, movie. You need more than that. You need more than that. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Acts 8 29. And the Spirit said to Philip, Go and join this chariot. You remember that story? The hymnot of Ethiopia was there, he was reading from Isaiah, he didn't understand what he was reading, and the Holy Spirit said, Now stand up. Philip, go and join yourself to that chariot. That is the work of a scriptwriter. There are so many questions in the world begging for answers. Some people, as I'm talking to you, they don't even know whether God still exists or not. Some people are cursing God as we are as we are talking now. Some people are about to go and commit suicide as we are talking now. Some people are just confused. There's divorce going on as we are talking now. Some children are in the hospital. Some people, so many things that need answers. And God is looking for that script writer that he can say, I give you this answer, write it in a way that my people will understand so that they can be delivered. And you are the one. So you need to be able to pick those signals at high frequencies. Not writing scripts about uh, somebody does not have money and uh, now he now pray to God now has money. It, that's normal. That's not revelation. It's not revelation. I was watching Abatua and I was listening to what Brother Milola was saying in those in, those, in, those, in those, this last episode. You will see that those are revelation. If you don't tarry in the presence of God, you can't get that. It's different from what you go and search out from dictionary or from journals. So we should be able to pick those things at high frequency. The next one is obedience to divine instruction. Now, once you have been able to separate yourself, you have stayed there, you are patient, Holy Spirit is now delivering, releasing those instructions to you, then what do you do with the instruction? What do you do with those information? You have to be obedient to the very later on those instructions. Otherwise, you may not have the next one. You see, some people are complaining. God is not talking to me again. God is not using me again. I think I feel dry. The question is, the last time he spoke to you, what did you do about it? The last time he gave you that instruction, how did you carry it out? The last time he gave you that revelation, did you even do anything about it? Some of us, we have been receiving messages in our dreams as we are sitting down, as we read Bible, and we never do anything about it. And we still want God to give more. God is not a waster. He's waiting for you to be obedient to the last command he gave to you. If he gave you the last command and you are not, and you are not, you did, you are not obedient to it, why are you expecting the next command? So, obedience is the key. If God says, go to Nineveh, don't go to Tashis. If God says, write on abortion, do not write about the wall in Ukraine because it's selling. No. If God says, this is the direction I want you to go, that is the direction he wants you to go. Obedience to divine instruction. Most times, divine instructions are not always reasonable to human faculty. Most times, they don't even make sense. They don't make many. Reasoning out with our sense will make no sense. What we need to do is obey and carry out the instruction. You remember, if the Israelites had waited at the Red Sea, at the bank of the Red Sea, and they did not step further, nothing might happen. If Moses refused to stretch forth the rod over the sea, nothing will happen. So, most times, because we went to school, because we have studied a lot, because of our experience in life, those things actually conflict what God is saying most times. So, we must come to a place whereby we reconcile it and say, whatever it is, whenever the truth meets with the fact, the truth will always win. Wherever the law of the of the of people meets with the law of God, the law of God supersedes. The law of God takes effect. Very, very important. You need to search yourself. All the instructions that God has been given unto me as a script writer, as a drama minister, have I been carrying them out to the latter? 
Amen. Acts chapter 8 verse 29 to 31. And the Spirit said to Philip, Go over to join the chariots. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I? Unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip to come up and sat with him. Divine instruction. The Lord said, Go and join yourself to that chariot. He didn't say why. He didn't say, Ah, that guy is fine. He's a rich man. No, he went. Because God sees the end from the beginning. God is going to give somebody a script in this house that by the time it comes out, it will look as if the wisdom of God has been put in paper for man to see. That will be your testimony. Because you will listen and obey divine instruction. Very, very key. Very, very important. Then, I have two more on this. They will now go to the practical section. Being a clean vessel always. You see, no matter how great a message is, if the messenger is not clean, the message will not come out well. That is why I will always defend it. You, you shouldn't use a Nollywood, a Hollywood that you don't know their Christian faith in, them, in your Christian movie. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Because it will confuse people. I saw, you, you imagine you have a character. You saw that character kissing somebody in Hollywood yesterday. And today you saw him in a, your, your production as a Christian, holding Bible, praying for somebody. And you have audience watching it. Are you not com, com, confusing the audience? You are bringing confusion to them. So, a clean vessel is very, very important in carrying out the message of the cross. Hallelujah. So, before you begin to write that script, before you begin to say, Father, I am ready, send me. You need to check yourself. Am I clean? Do I still have some hidden sins? Do I still have some things, little, little foxes that destroy the vines? Easily besetting sins. That may actually water down the message that God, Holy Spirit, is going to give to me. We need to work on that and ask Holy Spirit to help us cleanse me so that every message that flows through me is clean. Look at that, Babylonia. Whenever he writes a story, trust me, even if the story is not that strong because it's coming from a clean vessel, it attracts grace, it attracts power. And that is what you will become after this training in the name of Jesus. Your next script is going to go all over the world and it will touch lives in Jesus' name. So no matter how great the message is, if the carrier is unclean, the message will come out unclean. Therefore, for message to change lives, it must be conveyed by clean vessels. There are no two ways to hit. Clean vessels. If you are not there, ask Holy Spirit, help me cleanse me. I want to bring pure. You see, if you have a clean water and the hose is dirty and you pass the clean water through the, a dirty hose, you're going to have a dirty water. It's as simple as that. So, Jesus, Holy Spirit is the water. is clean. We are the hose. We are the pipes. So, if we want what Holy Spirit is passing through us to come out as pure, then we must make ourselves clean. By asking Holy Spirit to purge us, to cleanse us. It's not by work, but it's by, it's by His power. So, Matthew 12, 33 says, Make a tree good, and its fruit, fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. Simple. You are recognized by what you produce. You are recognized by what, by what comes out of you. Amen. Now, the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So let's look at um so that's that's that. I want us to look at the the technical and the professionalism aspect of script writing now. At least we've known what we need to do before we now start writing. Now, so before we start writing, the first thing we need to do is to look at what we want to write. Now we have the message. Holy Spirit has given us the message. We know what the message is about about um, rapture, 
about deliverance, about supremacy of the power of God, whatever it is, you know the message now. Now you now want to write. Number one thing you need to do, like we said, we know what script writing is, we have defined it. Number one thing we need to do is to look at the story or the message now and now do treatment for the message, which is called script treatment. It's called what? Script treatment. Now, when you are doing your script treatment, you need four major things. Number one, title. Number two, your log line. Number three, the characters. And number four, the scenes. I repeat, number one, the title. Number two, the log line. Number three, the characters. Number four, the scenes. Now, the Lord has given you a vision, a story, whatever, a message and everything. When you are writing your treatments, number one, you need to title it. It may change later, but it must have a title. So, for example, I put slow poison here. Now, when you're, to doing it, when you're talking about your title, I quickly want to give you a tip. Your title should be catchy. Your title should not be ambiguous. Your title should not be too Christian. It shouldn't be too Christian. If it's too Christian, you know what you are doing? You are saying this movie is meant for only Christian. If you are not, if you are not a Christian, you don't have to watch it. For example, um, The Lover of My Soul. It sounds good. But anybody that says no, okay, probably it's for Christian people. Or in the beginning. No, so you need to look for title that is catchy. That even an abalist will want to pick and watch. That is why they say don't judge a book by its cover. A title that is catchy. Very, very important. Number two, log line. Log line is just one sentence or two sentences that summarizes the entire story, the entire script. Very important. Log line. You need to write it. So I want to talk about slow poison now. So what will be my long life based on my story? A, a, a rude rich man who lost bribe must beg his way through before he can survive the attack of a fierce assassin in order to see his family again. Let's look at it together. Very, very important. A rude rich man who lost bribe must beg his way through before he can survive the attack of fierce assassin squad in order to see his family again. I will quickly break this, this, this down for us. Number one, a rude rich man. That is a protagonist. That is the hero. Are we getting it? Number two, what is his flaw? He loves to bribe. That is his shortcoming. Now, must now bribe his way through to survive the attack of the fierce assassin, antagonist, the assassins. Do we get it now? Antagonist, the assassins, before he can see his family again. The family stake character because they, they, they must have been telling him, you, you have been bribing, you have been doing this, you have been a wicked rich man, you have been a rude rich man, a rich man. Stop this, stop that, he won't listen. Now, let's look at it. A rude rich man, I said it's a protagonist, is the hero. is the one that you spend most of the time watching. The, the, the hero or the protagonist is the one that you invest your time on, is the one that actually undergo the major arc either from either, either from riches to rag or from rag, rag to riches you get it now is the major is the hero is the hero is the is the protagonist so is the one that want to see what happens to and let me quickly drop this as well every character okay maybe i'm talking about in the character every character you create in your script I want you to know that they are living characters. They have lives. Every character you create, they have lives. Because that is why we have to hire somebody to come and do that character. Because they are living. So, and because they are living, people can actually identify and relate to what they are doing. In that movie. So, once you are writing your character... You must have it in mind that you are creating character. It is only script writers that are giving that grace and power to create after God. 
you can ask we are creators as well because we create human beings we create characters and we bring them to life so that is how powerful god has called script writers you are powerful because you can create so the rich rude man is the protagonist and is the one that has the act change and all that then the force antagonist force here is the face assassin's code that's the antagonist do we get it now he has flaw the flaw is 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 inability not to stop bribing people yeah and we have the stick character the character that knows what this man is set to achieve the goal of this man right from the beginning the character knows it but the protagonist will never listen to the same character until he goes through the challenges of life amen so we get it now so you have to write your log line in such a way that it will include your protagonist it will include the antagonist force and it will include the stake character very very important i want you to type it in the chat what is a log line what is a log line what is a log line is anybody typing what is a log line god bless so what is a log line god bless dominion broadcast to everyone a sentence that summarizes the whole theme god bless you from lucia god bless lucia also what is a log line log line is a summary of then theme good 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 who is talking again what is a log line i like to i like summary of the whole story god bless you ma i like i like feedback summary of the whole story okay so what did i say a log line should contain what should you have in your log line okay let's go let's go let's go who's, 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 who's typing what should you have in your log line i believe i have good students so what should we have in our log line okay brother femi the protagonist the antagonist and the stake character god bless good 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 because the character the main character okay 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 so in your log line you must have the protagonist the antagonist force and the stick character why did i say the antagonist force i'll explain most times when we write because we write locally we think that antagonist should be a human being no most times antagonist should, must should, shouldn't be a human being it can be a human being it can it can be a force it can be an unseen force that is anti you know when you watch sci-fi or you watch an horror film most times those antagonist forces they are not actually human being so you can actually have your antagonist force in form of human being or not human being it can be an inanimate object that's what i'm trying to say or something that is abstract so once you are writing your next script i want you to begin to visualize all these things and include them in your next script amen Thank you so much, Joseph. In default, God bless you, sir. Contain the protagonist, the antagonist, and the stick character. Oh, good. I'm loving this. I had I like people that are responding. God bless you. So let's go to the next one. The characters. The characters are those living things that you created, that you have created with your script. You have brought them to life. Yeah. So these are the individuals created to drive the message. Please note that all characters are real and must be treated as living entities. Very, very important for a successful script writing. Your characters are real, are real because people can relate to them. You know, you are acting at times and people say, and somebody will come to you and say, ah, that is me. You just acted what is happening to me. It shows that character is real. Amen. And all scenes. Now, you have, had, you have your story you have your log line, you have your title, you have your character. You now need to develop your story scene by scene in such a way that each scene shouldn't be more than two paragraphs. Scene by scene, scene by scene. So scene one, um, we are going to have uh, the rich man and then uh, his family going on holiday, getting to airport. They left their visa at home and he bribed the officials to travel so he got to he got to france he wanted to come out he didn't, he didn't allow him to come out he bribed them again scene one scene two he got to the hotel he got to the hotel 
uh, they needed to put soil, they needed to, uh, uh, he's supposed to have reserved hotel, he did not reserve hotel, he had to bribe his way again. You write it, paragraph 2, scene 2. Scene 3, his wife and children, they were shouting at him that, Daddy, why do you like bribing and everything? That's, that's scene 3, paragraph 3. So you write your scenes in paragraph forms till the end. Do you get it now? So that is how to treat a story. It's called script treatment. So once you have that written down, you have your title, you have your log lines, you have your characters, and you have the scenes written down like that. Then you are ready to write yours. So because now you cannot miss any track. You everything is in fact what you are holding in your hand is a script that you just need to develop. It's as simple as that. It's a script already that you need to develop. That is what is called script treatment. Now I put something there. I said in Christian. Uh, movie making, writing, uh, script and script writing. I've noticed something that is um, has become like a pandemic now. It's called what is is uh, it's what I called or I tagged, and I heard it from somebody uh, when I was going through training. It's what I tagged, happy ending syndrome. Happy ending syndrome. So, when we write a script, we believe that it must end happily. It must end happily. So it must not end on a negative note. No, no, no. So you need to avoid happy ending sy syndrome in your script writing. Do we get it now? Very, very important. Very, very important. God might give you a message that does not end happily. That doesn't mean that message is not strong. That doesn't mean that message will not be accepted. No. Look at the case of Saul. King Saul. He started well, but it didn't end well. But it's a story to us. It's a lesson to us as Christians. Is it not? It's a lesson to us. Look at the case of Samson. Started good, but it didn't end well. But it's a lesson to us. So, avoid like a plague. Happy ending syndrome in your script. If God wants your script to, up, to, uh, to, to end happily, go for it. But if God wants it to end in a tragedy, go for it. Because you never know who will see that and will say, so if I live my life like this, this is how my life will end, then I need to change. Very, very important. Very, very important. Amen. So, that is that. Let's move quickly. So, now, we have done our treatment and all that and all that. We now want to look at how to now structure the script. How to, script, how to stru structure the script. In script writing, there's what we call Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. So, please, I want you to type in the chat. I want you to type in the chat. What did I say you should avoid in your script writing? I want everybody to type that. Everybody. What, sh what should you avoid in your script writing from today? And I need to see it. I, I want everybody to type it as we are teaching. I want us to type it. So before we go to this one, because this one is very, very important. And then I have eight minutes left. I won't be able to finish this tonight. I might need to continue tomorrow. I don't know. Um, okay, so we are typing. God bless you. Because it's about us having an understanding of what I'm teaching. Happy ending syndrome. God bless you. Mercy below. Star Mercy, God bless you. Sign Mercy, you Oh, great, 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 great. 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 That's it. We are getting it. Now let's go to the next one. Identification of acts. Act one, act two, and act three. Now, when you are writing your script, no matter how small it is or how big it is. I want you to adopt this method because this is a standard method of writing script. Your script you have Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. And all these acts must have their scenes. Do we get it now? Now, the conventional way of writing script uh, for Christian people, you just say scene 1, scene 2, scene 3. You can have up to 30 scenes. It's not bad, but it's not standard. So I want us to begin to, to, uh, to write script. In a standard format 
So now I'm going to quickly talk about Act One, Act Two, and Act Three. You see, I did not go and I did not take us through the rudiment of script writing because I just have the feeling that I've been teaching script writing for quite a number of time now. And I've actually, if you have sat under my script writing uh, teaching, you must have heard a lot about the element of script writing, like um, who is the protagonist, who is an antagonist, who, what is the flaw, what is the conflict, what is conflict re resolution, what is inciting incident, what is um, uh, obstacle, the arc and all that. I've taught that severally. So I don't want to go into that. I want to give us something that can actually help us to structure our script because we are going to write script in this training. So, so every script must be divided into three. Act one, act two, and act three. Now, act one, this is the beginning of your story. Here you introduce the protagonist. So we talked about protagonist. We said protagonist is the main character, is the hero, is the one that 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 um has to go out and find um what is lost is the one that uh, must achieve something there is a goal that your protagonist must achieve and you see that is coming from good to bad or from bad to good is the person or is the character that you will actually invest some of your time on and the audience will invest some of their time to watch you get it now so we know that is protagonist so in the beginning in the act one you must introduce your protagonist you must introduce the antagonist force or the antagonist and your state character to the audience so if you are going to have let's say you're going to have four scenes in your act one it must contain the introduction of all these people the events that introduce them those events that introduce your protagonist the events that for example scene one you introduce your protagonist Scene two, you introduce your antagonist. Scene three, you introduce your antagonist. Uh, sorry, the state character. Scene four, you introduce another event that happens to your protagonist. Scene five, you introduce inciting incident. You you build your act one like that, and in your act one, you must have at least twelve major events that make the audience to stay glued to the screen. So in your act one, you must have at least what 12 major events. Number one, uh, he relocates. Number two, he lost his child. Number three, um, uh, he had to fight from the dream. You must have at least 12 major events. 12 major events in your act one. So all those things must contain at least 12 major events. And I'm talking to you about a full-length movie i'm talking about a 90 pages um script you're writing 90 pages script now these 12 major events are not the same as inciting incident so before the end of if about 15 minutes which is that's 15 page to your act one you must have your inciting incidents inciting incidents is that events that happens to your protagonist that changes his course of life that makes him to now want to pursue his goal it's different from major 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 events that happens to him so you build your act one in such a way that you introduce your protagonist your antagonist and your stick character and then you ensure that you have at least 12 major events that happens for example if you are writing a script of just 10, 10 pages you can say okay because i'm writing script of 10 pa 10, 10 pages i'm going to make act one three page uh, four pages act two four pages and actually two pages so act one four pages instead of having 12 major events let me just try have 10 major let me try have six or eight major events you plan it from the beginning you plan it so instead of okay i'm going to have six major events in act one six major events in act two and two major event events in act three I'm, I'm teaching us how to structure our script good so now we know that we must calculate those events and create those events very very important and after creating those events we must also create inciting incidents praise the lord now you will also create a very strong antagonist force you see i've seen so many christian script that when you read it 
this message is good, but it, the way it was written is bad. Now, when you create a strong protagonist, you must create a very strong antagonist force in such a way that when people are watching it, they will think that this protagonist will not be able to overcome the force of the enemy. That is what brings strong, strong conflict. So if your antagonist is so, so weak, you will never have a strong conflict. So the antagonist force must be very strong. It must be very fierce. It must look as if uh, this protagonist will not be able to, to overcome. So you build a very strong protagonist, a very strong antagonist force, and you now build, build a very knowledgeable state character. Very knowledgeable state character that knows the answer. Now, so we must know that uh, um, it is almost so. Once our, our antagonist, um, we must create a very strong antagonist that the protagonist will look like it cannot overcome. Very, very important. Very, very important. Okay, um, let me see where we are. Okay, we've done this. Okay, let's move quickly because of my time. I don't have that time more. I hope we are getting it. So let's go. So now, in Act 1, one of your scenes in Act 1 must contain inciting incident. I've said that. Which means that mind-blowing, near-death event that changes the life of your protagonist and sets him in motion to pursue the goal of the movie. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I wish I can finish this, but I don't think I have time. I think I need to stop here. Or what do we do? I still have, how many slides do I have? I don't know. Oh, moderator, what do we do? I have to more slide. What? Sorry? Okay, so I need to, okay. All right, so tomorrow I will, I will continue from where I stopped. We're going to stop here tonight. We're going to stop in Act 1. So I will take us from Act 1 tomorrow, and I will run through tomorrow. So please, don't forget, you are going to be well blessed. Um, what you have learned today, I believe, was, um, uh, you will work on that. By the grace of God, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn more uh, as we come back tomorrow. Uh, I pray the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Let me ask, does anyone have questions based on what we have learned tonight? As I hand us over back to Brother Femi. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, sir. Okay. Amen. Uh, please, if you have questions, you either raise your hand or you use the in call chat box so that we can read them. Brought to me all the way. Please, your question. Thank you. Please, we have 30 seconds to relate our question so that we can have enough time for answers to. Brought to me. Okay, so thank you so much, sir, for the teaching. I, I really enjoyed it and I God will, God will keep on strengthening you, sir. Sir, I want to ask if, as a scriptwriter myself now, I, I went ahead and like, I, I make it a, how, how would I call it now? Like, I make it something that I want to be making money from. So I went ahead and learned more and learned more about it. And then um, circular people comes to, for me to screenplay their scripts. And I, and I did so, all because I'm, prof, I'm professional in that, in that area. Is it a sin unto me? Because what they are doing is not, their, their story is not glorifying God. Okay, so thank you. Know, sir. That's fine. Thank you, Brother Mileni. Now, we need to be able to define what a sin is and what a sin is not. Now, if you are a professional screenwriter, you should know that that is what you, um, that is your own and uh, means of livelihood. That's what you do for a living. Now, that doesn't mean you cannot write for Hollywood or Nollywood. We have Christian brothers and sisters writing good scripts for Hollywood and Nollywood. You see, where you're going to draw the line is what to write and what not to write. What to write and what not to write. In Hollywood, there are still moral messages. They are not promiscuous. They are not immoral. They are just moral messages. I watch Nollywood, but I select what I watch in Nollywood. I watch, there are some good movies in Hollywood that you can actually watch. Not all of them are bad. It's just that you may not know the one that is good, so you need to select. So if they if they give you a storyline and they, and they ask you to write as a good scriptwriter and you read through the storyline, you know if, it's, if the job is for you or not. 
If the job is for you, go ahead and write it. Let them know that you see. Once you are a child of God and you don't, you, you did not hide it. People know what you can do and what you should not do. So at the first, they might come and test you to see if you, if you will compromise. Once they see that you don't compromise, those that will still patronize you will patronize you because they know you won't control compromise. But that that doesn't mean you can't write for Nollywood or Hollywood or Bollywood. You can, but do not cross the line. Are you getting it? And let people know that I can write for you, but this I can't write. This I can't write. I won't write a man sleeping with another man. I won't write it in my script. No, but I can write a script on moral, on ethics, on politics. I can write a script for you, and it will bless lives. Praise the Lord. I hope that answers it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. So we go to straight to the next person, bro. Phillips, please. That seconds to um, relate your question. Thank you. Okay, he has he has typed it. Okay, let me read it loud. Can the log line also contain the summary of the theme that the movie centers on? Now, now the purpose of log line is to give the summary of what the movie is about. You get it? So the purpose of that log line is to give the summary of what movie. So it has to contain what the movie is all about. For example, the one I gave example, a rude rich man that lost bribes, must bribe his way um, through the assassin, assassin, assassin's court um, for him to be able to see his family again. You see that? That is the summary of the whole, whole movie, of the whole script. That's the summary. Yeah, But it must have some elements some elements which is very important those elements are it must have the protagonist it must have the antagonist force and it must have the stake character do we get it but that's just that's the summary but it must have those elements praise the lord i think that's uh, i think that that's um, that's understandable bro phillips thank okay. you very much sir thank you so we take right. the last question for tonight um, Sister Fumi, please, your question. God we bless. Have one minute left. Thank you very much. Um, my question is um, at times when we are reading scripts, we do see some scripts that they only have it as a scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four. And there are some scripts again that we always have them as at one, scene one, at one, scene two. I want to know is there any reason for doing that, or is there a particular style to a particular story? Well, we have some that we just have seen one, seen two, seen three, seen four. Some which at one, seen two, at one, seen three. That's just why I'm confused, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much for that question. Like I said when I was giving the, uh, the training, now, the standard way of writing script is to put those scenes under acts. So a good standard script will have act one, act two, act three. In fact, I shot a movie not quite long. I saw act four. There's nothing like act four. It's act one, act two, act three. Then under those acts, you now put those things there. But most times when we write in Christian, in Christian dumb like this, we just put those things together. I, I do the same thing as well most times. I just put scene one, scene two. You know why? Because of laziness. It's just laziness. And once you don't have script treatment, you will end up writing your screen in scenes because you did not do the script treatment at the beginning. So you don't even know what goes into Act 1. You don't know what goes into Act 2. You don't know what goes into Act 3. But if you have done your script treatment, you will know that in Act 1, I'm going to have 4 or 5 scenes. In Act 2, I'm going to have 4 or 5 scenes. In Act 3, I'm going to have just 3 scenes. You get it? So the standard way of writing a script for you to be able to, rec to be recognized as a good script writer is to have it as Act 1, Act 2, Act three, they will not have those scenes under those acts. Hope that is uh, yes, sir. Yeah, thank right. you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Man. Okay, I think there's no other question. Yeah, one last question from um bro Joseph. He asked if um logline is the same as the premise. Um premise is not the same thing, it's not the same thing. Log line is log line is um what I've just um defined. Log line is what I've just defined. So premise is different. 
premise and the things that surrounds um um the story you get it this the story um it's quite different from log line it's not the same thing um another thing another thing we need to look at when we are talking about script writing is the um the ambiguity of um of words for example when i was giving us example the other time that i gave us scene heading and i said scene heading is the same thing as log line you know somebody might come and say okay give what, what, what is well let me see your scene heading you get it it's the same thing as log line but when you look at log line and premises premises is a bit it's like you are writing a mini synopsis you get it you know synopsis now synopsis is just the summary of the whole movie but in one or two pages you get it so you can't really call synopsis log line you get it now because they are not the same log line is just one or two sentences why synopsis is one or two pages so so the premises has more details than log line that's what i want to put it praise the lord hope that is understandable Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So that will be the last question for tonight. Please, if you have further questions, you can use um, a group was created today to announce all our thoughts, feedbacks, and other things that we likely want to discuss. Uh, please, you can use that group so that we can relate your question back to our Father and the Lord to answer those questions. Please, and um, please, thank you very much. So, Sorry, bro, uh, for me, before I go, please. If you have not, I mean, if you if we, have, we create a, we created a group for us for this purpose, that group will be deleted after this training. If you are not part of that group because of probably the country code or anything or anything, please let us know now so that they can include you in that group. Otherwise, you may not have access to some of the information that will be passed thereafter. Because I checked, a couple of people registered, but. It's cause just a few number of people that are on that group because of the country code and all that. I think our registrar and Prophet me will explain better on that area. So just make sure that you we get uh, your proper contact information so that you can be part of that group. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. We are very grateful to all, all for having you too for the way and manner you have been able to deliver your um, teaching tonight. Thank you very much. We pray that God will continue to and grace you the more in Jesus' name. Quickly, we move on to our announcement now to be handled by our very own registrar of Dominion Faith Institute, the person of Evangelist Ola BC Aetigo. Thank you very much. God bless you, ma'am. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome tonight. It's always awesome um, at Dominion Christian Institute, isn't it? Every month we get charged, we get trained, we get new skills will improve. We are ready as soldiers, as champions. So thank you very much sir, for that wonderful session tonight. Uh, it has blessed us one more time and I know tomorrow will be loaded, we will increase in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you all the participants as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Um, quickly, I'm going to go through the announcement. My name is Olabisi, as they said, Olabisi Ayetigo. I am the registrar for Dominion Christian Institute, the arm of Dominion Faith Ministry, where we raise giants for Christ, where we raise army for the Lord. And it has been awesome in the past um, nearly two years now that we've started the Institute. And God has been increasing us in numbers, in wisdom, in knowledge, in, you know, to the north, to the south, to the west, to the, across the nations of the world. So I want to also, um, appreciate all the new participants, all the new students that saw the flyer across social media, everywhere in their churches and chose to register. You are welcome where God will do you good and will increase you in knowledge and in wisdom. So welcome all the participants and also all the old students. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. My job tonight quickly is to go through the announcement and the purpose of script writing workshop for these two days. Firstly, the purpose of the workshop is that we'll increase in our skill as a script writer, as a creative minister. So please, if you are not, if you've not found yourself in any of the group, like uh, Brofemi said, please write your number again in the chat now. We will add it 
And those ones that are still remaining, we will ensure to add them tonight. We will go through them. And even if we don't finish them tonight, we will continue after the training and ensure that we add everyone, including people from Cameroon, including people from Togo, including people from um, Caribbean. We will ensure because some of the code we didn't get it. So they just put their name there. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, we're seeing the numbers. We will add them to the group. And by the grace of God, tomorrow there will be there will be two groups and there will be two captains that will be leading those groups tomorrow. So tomorrow we will go into different groups tomorrow. The director will put us into groups where we'll be we'll be we will be taught. You know, Minister Messi have taught us tonight. Uh, the director have taught us tonight, and there will be more teaching. There will be more teachings coming our ways tomorrow. So, bringing all these virtues together, we every participant is expected to deliver a script, even if it is a short script, even if it is a five minute movie. We will endeavor to make sure we bring them to limelight. We will endeavor to make sure we shoot them, even if it's going to be at your location, even if it is one man drama, do the Lord proud this season. And let's ensure that we put the devil to shame by making sure gospel messages, educational messages, creative messages, inspiring messages are out there coming through you and high. And that is the purpose of this March workshop. So please, when you get tomorrow, Ensure you log in on time. And crucial announcement for tomorrow is that the training for tomorrow is holding 9 a.m. is holding at morning session. It's not evening session as, as uh, it was written in the flyer. So please uh, well, pardon us for that. Uh, sincere apology. People requested Saturday should be morning session so that they can have the rest of the weekend for their family, which is good. So we've listened and we want to make sure we listen to everyone. Tomorrow's session is going to be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So for Nigeria, it's going to be 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Please work it out with your location. If you're in Cameroon, if you're in Togo, if you're in uh, Caribbean, please work it out. It's going to be UK time, 9 a.m. To, to 11 a.m. in the morning. So we can have time to go about our business for the day. And we can write the script before we even finish. So tomorrow we are going to go into group sessions. Tomorrow we are going to have captains able to use all the skills and deliver a script for the Lord. You do your part and let us do our part as well. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, quickly announcement is that praise the Lord. I want us to celebrate a January session um, student participant. We are going tonight, they are releasing a movie. They are releasing an inspiring godly movie. And the title is The Scar. The, you know, the, the fascinating thing about this script was the storyline was brought out from the story of the prodigal son. However, it has been adopted, it has been too stopped, it has been, you know, all sort of, and it's not talking to families, it's talking to marriages, it's talking to new homes, it's talking to, to families. So, okay, Sky, you can go on, sir. Thank you very much, the media team. Thank you. God bless you, sir. That is the movie that is coming out tonight at 9 a.m. We are going to put it in the group chat. We are going to have a lovely premiere Friday movie night, family movie night. So please join us. Get your popcorn, get your Coke, get your Pepsi, get your ticket, get your goggles, everything, and ensure that you enjoy this movie by yourself and with your family produced by participants like students like you as well. So please let's support the work of the Lord and let's watch, let's share it as well. As soon as it comes out, put it everywhere. That is your own way of evangelizing. Please, as an evangelist, distribute it, share it, and let us increase in leap and in band as disciples and soldiers of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Nine 
p.m. tonight is coming out and we are going to enjoy together as a family. Also, uh, Dominion Global Night of Prayer is the first Sunday of every month and is accompanied by three days fasting and prayer. So we are having the next one on the 3rd of, February, of April. 3rd of April 2022. So we're going to have start with fasting and prayer from Friday. You are free to join us. It's just one hour prayer. And on Saturday, we meet again. And on Sunday, the grand finale, we come together, Global Night of Prayer, ministering with us is Evangelist Yemi Jacob and our own Evangelist Yemi Ayetibo. And the theme of April is wonderful. It is so wonderful. It says power to excel power to excel. So come this weekend and pray. You know what? Last This month was called Bountiful Harvest. And I can share a testimony with you that it has been awesome. Awesome. You know, marriage is about to happen in Dominion. The marriage I've been waiting for for over 10 years. The Lord is making it happen. The date has been set. We are going tonight. It's going to be wonderful. The Lord has been increasing us. There's been healing, miraculous healing increase. Bountiful others that is not just about money, but in signs and in wonders. This is what we enjoy in this place, on this altar, on this platform, because we are champions and our prayers are championly answered. Praise the name of the Lord. Quickly as well, uh, the major movie that was shot last year, Jayola is coming out. The project is completed, is, is ready, is set. Please do the work of an of evangelist, as, it, as I always say it again, please distribute it, share it, and let us ensure that we distribute this when it comes out to everyone and everyone. If you would like to be part of uh, the workforce of Dominion Christian Institute, I want to uh, uh, plead the judges to please join us as the registrar. The work is enormous. We are, we are creating a platform for the host whereby we'll be professionally trained. Please, um, okay. Uh, the, the the jingle for joining the dialogue is place. Come to pass. Yesterday, we met and you spoke a word into our life. What if I tell you that by this time tomorrow, your daughter will be on her two legs walk? Yes. Ah, I am Brotherhood. In God, we stand. What is this? I grew on that dungeon. You will have to come with us for further clarification about your film. Mm -hmm. The Board of Trustees has decided to transfer you to the Maasai village in Kenya. You still have the guts to trust the chicken. How dare you? And you raised my hope. You raised my hope about this to what thing. Is it an offense to marry you? What is the usefulness of a gift when one cannot benefit from it? Jayola, the gift of God is not for you to benefit. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're excited. God is doing all some things in our midst. We are busy for the Lord. We are busy for the gospel. Praise the name of the Lord. That is Jayola is coming to our screen very soon. One is coming out tonight, remember? So stay glued and stay tuned in the name of Jesus. So finally, the last announcement, if you want to join the workforce, if you have a special gift and you want to use it for the Lord, you have a creative gift and you want to use it for the Lord, please put your name in the chat or in the group WhatsApp platform that's been created. Let us know and we will give you the platform to flourish and to function for Christ. We have Austin, you know, session department. We have media department. Uh, they will be coming out maybe the next training or tomorrow to speak. Uh, the head of those departments, if you have any creative gift and you want to function for the Lord, please, this is what we do for Christ. Reach out to me and you will function. If it is prayer, if it is teaching, let us come together and let us function very well for the Lord. We need people in the media department. We need people as the host 
and you know we, we, you will be professionally trained you will be prayed for you will be supported and you will be equipped and the lord will do you good as you obey in the name of jesus so lastly tomorrow again please log in nine o'clock 9 a.m uk time 10 a.m nigeria time work out the time and let's do god good join on time and let us do two hours with the lord tomorrow on script writing and storytelling. Again, my name is Ola Bisi Ayeti, but the registrar for Dominion Christian Institute has been wonderful working with all the participants behind the door, sending you messages, calling you, chatting you up, encouraging you and sharing all this platform with you. Thank you for honoring God in my life. And thank you very much, sir, for giving us the platform to function for Christ. Thank you very much. Let's jam us together for our mommy. Let's jam us together for that way. And manage and do the announcement. So um, lastly, before we go, we'll be calling on um, prophetos, prophetess Fumi or Gatsi Mirin to close us um, with a few words of prayer. But before that, please, for those that want to reach us, our correspondence is um, Dominion Ministries Global at gmail.com. I'll take that again. Dominion Ministries Global at gmail.com. Dominion Ministry Global is together at gmail.com. For those that want to reach out to us, for those that were able to add them on the group for that WhatsApp that was created, and you still want to give feedbacks or for any correspondence at all, please, you can do it to reach out to the Mino Faith Christian Ministry. Thank you very much. So we call on Prophet uh, Fumi or Gatsi Mili to close us in a few words of prayer. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you. God bless you, sir. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Vegas, everlasting Father, our Lord and our God, we just want to thank you. We want to appreciate you for tonight, O oh Lord. We thank you, especially on behalf of our Father in the Lord. Evangelist Yemi Ayetigo for using him. I thank you, Gateway, on behalf of our mother, the registrar of this Dominion Ministry, O oh Lord. I thank you on behalf of every soul that has come together to learn at your feet today, O oh Lord. I thank you, O oh Lord, for that that we've been imparted, O oh Lord. I thank you for that seed that has imparted in us, O oh Lord. For I know that thou shalt germinate it and water it for us, O oh Lord. We appreciate you, our Abba Father for making it possible for us to come together, O oh Lord. King of glory, accept our thanks. As we are now going to depart, O oh Lord, individual, we are going to go now, I'm sure to do one or two things or to even go to our bed or very soon to sleep. Holy Spirit, continue to join in with us, O oh Lord. We commit tomorrow into your able hands, O oh Lord, that that has made today to be possible for us. Tomorrow is before thee. Holy Spirit of the Most High God, by the time we shall meet again tomorrow, let us be fully imparted. Our section of today, our session of tomorrow, do not allow it to go in vain, O oh Lord. Knowledge you are asking for, and that's upon every soul, O oh Lord. We now commit the dominion ministry to your hebel hands, O oh Lord. King of glory, let it continue to be growing from glory to glory. Let it continue to be going from glory to glory, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, you are the one that can teach. Continue to teach us, O oh Lord. Continue to direct us, O oh Lord. Continue to be able to impart us more. And all those that we've learned today, let us be able to use it for your glory. And then of it all, when that trumpet shall stand, I pray, O oh Lord, King of glory, let us be able to reign with you eternally. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that uh, wonderful way you handled the prayer. So we've received some names, and uh, we can um, confidently tell you that uh, we'll be reaching out to those that have sent out their numbers. Uh, we received numbers from Esther, JC, Salem, Joseph, uh, in church, uh, Joseph, in different. Thank you very much for um, that wonderful way you have responded positively. Thank you very much, very much everyone. We really want to thank our Father and the Lord for granting us this privilege. I wish you all good night, rest. Thank you. Let's be one another. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's thank, let's be one another. We can unmute and be one another. Hallelujah. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. Technical give us music. Bye everyone. Uh, technical music. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.